It's not your fault that nobody blames you. Please don't cry, please. Nobody yeah. blames you. Yeah. Honestly. We thank you for coming over. Nobody blames you. No one. It was just an accident, pure and simple. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. It wasn't for the pills that I'm taking, I would my life would have been done a long time ago. You think you may have? Oh, absolutely. Would you have, I would have taken my life as, absolutely. You would have killed yourself. Absolutely. Mental disability is a, it's a huge thing. It's uh, it's uh, it's it's got me crippled. Love your husbands and wives. Love each other. In general, the fighting industry, including mixed martial arts, boxing, and everything else related to that concept can significantly change the life of a person for better or worse. For example, you could be a superstar, a rich and powerful person adored by the millions of fans around the globe. And there is another scenario where one can experience helplessness, loneliness, fatality and many other unpleasant feelings. In today's video, we will remember a few performers from the fighting world who proved how ruthless the professional sport can be. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words, and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. This man's great. <laughs> I don't know what would happen if he hit me. You know, I don't believe that because the champ is very modest. You know what I mean? Yeah. I seen him in a ring Ooh, with killers. Man. I seen yeah. him in there with killers, like foreman, shavers, guys that yeah. hit much harder than I. Yeah. And you know, he takes these guys' greatest punches, and that's what made him such a champion. I mean, even though I heard him say he didn't believe, he must have believed because that's why from watching Ali, gave me the great deal of confidence and deep down in the belief to believe there's no man in this planet that could beat me. On June the 3rd of 2016, the world of professional boxing and sports in general suffered a grievous loss. On that day, the greatest fighter in history, Muhammad Ali, passed away. As we know, for the last 30 years he had Parkinson's disease. This diagnosis was officially confirmed in 1984, three years after Ali hung up the gloves. Back then, this news flew all over the world. Muhammad was put in hospital due to an abrupt hearing and speaking deterioration and failure of motor functions. However, it wasn't something unexpected. The first cause of the future health problems began to bother the greatest already in 1970. This was confirmed by the boxer's personal doctor, Ferdi Pacheco, who also is not with us anymore. He started to notice the first symptoms of cognitive distortion of his client. A famous writer, Jonathan Icke, together with other speech experts, analyzed a few videotapes of Ali speaking and made a conclusion that he began to gradually lose his ability to speak clearly already in 1970. These are exactly the cause that presaged Parkinson's disease. Who are you most grateful to for your career? My career even then. Allah, all my success, all my protection, all my finishes, all my victory, all my courage, everything comes from Allah. As we know, Muhammad was getting hit with a lot of punches, though he was one of the pioneers of smart boxing with defensive movements. But his favorite trick was to stay at the ropes and play with his opponents. Jonathan Icke expressed his opinion that the champion missed approximately 200,000 punches throughout his career, half of which came to the head. So, no matter how tough it's for us to admit it, but that's the reason why the legend was in such a terrible state in his last years as we can see on this footage. However, it's not the most disturbing case as we move on. I always wanted to fight in Canada period and uh, I was offered a time to fight in Canada um, a while in, uh, in Edmonton and I was excited to fight in Edmonton but uh, I have a problem that, uh, that just wasn't getting better and I, I needed to take a rest at the time that, that, that I had scheduled the fight in Edmonton and uh, now I, 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 I'm, I'm good and Iroquois made, uh, I was in negotiation with these people probably about two months. And uh, we feel good, I feel good, I feel like I'm being respected and treated good. The next story is no less sad. Many have heard such a nickname as Big Daddy even outside of martial arts, but we're talking about a particular performer. In the 2000s, the name of Gary Goodrich was at every corner. 
This big, powerful, charismatic and brutal guy was invited almost every week to participate in tournaments all over the world to give the fans a spectacle. And he was not thinking about the consequences he would face in decades to come. He did not take care of his health. The athlete only cared about how much he was going to get paid and when he would be invited to the tournament next time. Goodridge did not spare himself in the ring. He was going all out, sharing the canvas with different fighters of various caliber and level of skills. Sometimes he was winning, but more often he suffered devastating losses. And the worst thing is that the money that he exchanged for health was only enough to have a decent lifestyle between the performances and traveling to another country to compete in front of a new crowd. He didn't even make a fortune to secure his future after leaving the sport, and retirement happened to be forced. While expenses grew bigger due to prescribed pills, he needed medication to slow down the illness called chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which can't be cured. One can only put in a lot of effort to live with it. My days suck. What happens in the morning when you wake up? I feel like going back to sleep. I could get a job, but I forget I had the job. It doesn't get better. This is the best that you will be. Gary continues to live with his family and sometimes goes outside to meet with his friends and pass some experience to the new generation of young athletes. But every day, he loses a piece of memory about past events, a piece of himself. And the most disturbing thing is that this process is irreversible. Pills only slow down the illness, but doesn't stop it. And the next day I had to come back to North Carolina. So I flew and at mm. the airport, I was, I was concussed, but I didn't realize that, you know, I don't think, I don't remember if I went to the hospital or not, but the, of course they gave me the 60 day suspension or whatever it was. But uh, I try to walk a straight line in the airport and I couldn't. And uh, you know, the straight lines in there and I tried to do it. And uh, the last time that I I'd actually tried on my own will to do something. And I remember my balance was shot and the next time that I tried to do that is when I realized uh, I had problems. The next performer in line is a former UFC fighter, Spencer Fisher. In the 2000s, he was kind of a local star and favorite of the company's president, Dana White. Because even though the veteran did not become the UFC champion, people loved him for the beauty of his performances, spectacle and full dedication that he gladly showcased in the center of the octagon. Overall, Fisher was competing with no issues for the bigger part of his career. But in 2012, he suddenly announced that he was retiring from the sport. It turned out that before another scheduled bout, he couldn't pass the medical commission and he wasn't allowed to get in the cage. And after that, he disappeared for nine years. Spencer suddenly appeared on the radars only in 2021. A former fighter stated he suffers from progressive brain deterioration and gradual memory loss. At first, he went through depression after he heard his diagnosis, and then he turned into a cripple. He kept silent for a long time because he was getting money from the organization. But in 2016, the promotion refused to have anything to do with Fisher. They stopped replying to his messages and said that the current state of the veteran's health is his personal problem. Every year, the condition of a former fan favorite gets worse. He was recognized as disabled and all of the burden of his care was put on his spouse's shoulders. Luckily, she managed to find some money to open a small gym where Spencer can practice as a coach. Because when you're young, you're, you're thinking of the right now and uh, living in the moment and the money at the time. And, and uh, even though it wasn't great, you know, I got a lot of bonuses and got sponsors at the time. and. Uh, I was living happy, you know, happily, and uh, then one day it always comes to an end, regardless of what sport you're in. But the uh, injuries I took for, from it, uh, just I don't know, I don't know if it was worth it, you know. And now my message is to tell people that hey, this is a possibility, this could happen to you, and it's very real, and it's changed my life. Spencer suffers from headaches and memory loss and sometimes it seems to him that the world falls apart right before his eyes. The veteran gets worse, but doctors say that they can only fight the symptoms. The illness itself is incurable, as sad as it sounds. Now, we're going to talk about the Puerto Rican boxer of the past generation who got into the spotlight at a very young age. 
which eventually led to its undoing. Because many experts who remember Wilfred Benitez argued that a very early fame in the athlete's life played a bad joke on him. Because either way, he forever went down in history of the sport as one of the most remarkable boxers of his time and one of the prime examples of a hurt boxer that was left on the outskirts of the sport. Benitez's background was quite ordinary. After showing interest and required commitment in the workouts, a young talent quickly started to gain traction. Already at an early age of his career, he took the world of boxing by storm, conquering his first championship at the age of 17. After a couple of very bright and memorable years, Wilfred managed to fascinate the entire boxing community with his style and great level of professional skills. But as you might have already figured out, at the cost of his health. Either way, a couple more vivid performances and titles would be added to his resume together with terrifying consequences of an eventful career. Closer to the end, the veteran returned to his home soil due to a sudden deterioration of health. The last years of his career also weren't as bright and now one of the most prominent prospects of that era started to experience health issues. Soon, people found out that Benitez was diagnosed with CTE caused by brain trauma. Because of the illness, many people's favorite would be bedridden and would lose ability to speak and move. Unfortunately, the truth is that the sport that gives you everything can take everything away in the blink of an eye. Nigel, Gregory, Ben, Gregory, Gregory, be right here. Gregory, Gregory, Nigel, Gregory, Ben, Nigel, Gregory, Ben. Yes. 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 Gerald. Well, 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 Looking at you. You got a clean or a set? Set. 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 Can we get it? Just take one more. Can I just take one more? Just, just like that. The next story is no less touching because it's about a boxer who in his time was close to being as popular as the legendary Mike Tyson himself. The name of this guy likely doesn't mean anything to most of you, but Gerald McClellan is an American professional and a former middleweight champion of the world who became the prisoner of circumstances by participating in the most vicious fight in the entire history of the sport. In 1995, the path of a quickly rising fan favorite, or as they called him, Child of Fortune, abruptly came to its end. On February 25th, McClellan was one win away from a great clash with Roy Jones and a status of a boxing icon. It was supposed to be a formal step before turning into a full-blown superstar. But this exact step was remembered by the world as the most vicious beatdown in boxing history. Gerald's opponent, who at that time had a record of 31 wins and 2 losses and was an undisputed champion, happened to be not the most promoted and famous Nigel Benn. As we already said, there were many factors in this particular case which led to such a sad outcome. Just a couple of examples would be enough for you to understand the scale of tragedy. The ref that worked on that night didn't even know English and couldn't understand what Gerald was hinting at when he got hit to the back of the head by his opponent, which was illegal. Negligent coaches and promoter Don King didn't even try to listen to their client between the rounds, telling them that he was not feeling good, which led to a predictable outcome. Hematoma in the brain. A couple of weeks in a coma, and at the end, a completely disabled person with a broken life. Yeah. No. What's that, your money maker? Huh? Is that your money maker? Huh? Your money maker. Yeah. 
Gerald McClellan is very bad. He is totally blind, 80% deaf, and lost almost all memory of the past events. The only good thing in his life right now is his sisters that take care of him in the shabby house of his hometown's outskirts as his children and wife abandoned him after they heard the diagnosis. I see the progress. It's going to be big after this fight. I will do everything in my power to box and of course win. I will do my best. I don't like to say something like, I will win, I will break you and stuff like that. I will do everything to win. And then all power to Allah. He will do what's right. And the last story of today in a way resembles the previous one. The only difference is that it happened more recently. By November of 2013, the world of boxing was about to witness a new star, Magomed Abdusalamov, a two-time champion of Russia that transitioned to this sport from Thai boxing. In just five years of active career, he amassed a record of 18 stoppage victories and no losses. His next opponent before the opportunity to contest the world championship happened to be Cuban-Irish Mike Perez with 19 victories on his resume. The upcoming fight in New York was supposed to be a definitive one in the life and career of the boxer from Makachkala. And it was. The battle was glorious, a true 10-round scrap till the bitter end. Neither boxer took a step back, constantly throwing dynamite from both hands. After the given time, Magomed did not look very good. And that's understandable, he and the Cuban had a war. Based on the judges' scorecards, on that night he suffered his first and, as we found out later, only loss in his career. But his most important battle was ahead. Very soon, after the announcement of results and moving backstage, Magomed told his team that he was feeling bad. Abdus Salamov said he had a severe headache and frailty. The fighters' representatives reached out to the medics at the arena, but they didn't treat Magomed's request seriously, as they were supposed to be other fights on that night. In the end, the guys' team had to move to the hospital on their own. Not to mention that at night, New York was completely jammed up. So, on November the 6th, a 32-year-old guy had a stroke, and after subsequent surgery, he turned into a man not able to walk, sit, feed himself, think and speak. Only thanks to his wife, her care and incredible level of effort, the boxer managed to achieve some results in recovery that continues till this day. Older daughter once wrote a letter. She wrote, Santa, I don't need anything. I don't need toys, nothing. I'm just asking for my father to get better and so my mother can rest. Which of the aforementioned cases did you remember the most? Leave your opinion in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos. And of course, hit the like button if you enjoyed this one. See you soon.